Hey guys, happy Monday. Welcome. Glad you guys are here today. I haven't seen you for a while. I wasn't here this weekend at all, so it seems like forever. So we are working on block 70 of the Splendid Sampler Quilt Along. We have one section done. We need to make three more of these. We're in the process of that. It's foundation paper piecing, which has been uh, just really fun. So we're going to do another step on that today. So thanks so much for being here again, guys. Uh, for more info on this project, it's at thesplendidsampler.com. And I'm putting all these videos up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies. So you can check out all of the blocks from the Splendid, the Splendid Sampler quilt along there. I'm working on getting them all up. They're almost all up. Not quite, though. Uh, so thanks again for coming in. If you're new here, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. I'm the author of Sew and Stitch Embroidery and a fabric designer, and I'm here every weeknight at 9.30 p.m. Central, and we are still working through the Splendid Sampler Quilt Along. I'm on my second to last block. Uh, I, I kind of did them as the blocks came out, so I had some unfinished ones, and I'm on my last to unfinished blogs. Hey guys, thanks for popping in. Uh, and we're working through those, trying to get it done so we can put this quilt together. It's been over a year in the making right now. <laughs> we started it last year on Valentine's Day. So isn't that crazy to think about? Man, we've done 100 blocks for it. So, all right, almost 100 blocks, 98 blocks. We're, we're on the 99th now. <laughs> so, all right guys, I'm gonna flip you around. We'll get started. Okay, so if you have seen my uh, Splendid Sampler or my uh, my paper piecing stuff before, you'll notice I got my pin out and my Wonder Clips out. That means um, that what I'm doing today is going to start sewing these pieces together. So instead of, uh, you know, we have all these pieces yet to go, we have the D section, the E section, the F and the G sections yet, but I thought instead of moving, moving, yeah, yeah, plus tons of bonus blocks, yes, Judith, I only need one bonus block though, but there have been almost as many bonus blocks as real blocks, I feel like. Okay, so uh, instead of moving on, since it's getting to be like piles of pieces everywhere and I'm in this really small workspace, I thought I would kind of jump ahead and put sew these guys together tonight. So what we're what we're making is this center area. I don't even know. Hold up, hold up. Hold it off for you guys there. So that's that's what we're gonna do. We have our center square, and we're gonna sew these two sides because that's really the next part. Because. Uh, We'll have one strip then, then we can paper piece the top piece and sew it on, and then the bottom piece and sew it on. But just for the sake, like I said, of not having tons of tiny pieces everywhere, I'm going to sew these together tonight. And that's probably all we'll get to tonight, but we'll be fresh and ready to go for tomorrow to finish to finish up. Um, you know, I think we'll at least get these top and bottom pieces done tomorrow. And then it's just a, a lot of assembly, so that'll be good. So, okay, let's start with one of these sections at a time. We'll do this guy first. So the big thing that we need to do here is we need to match up our points because we want these points to be perfect. Like we want that point to lead right in and match up with that, that square of the second piece. So it's these two squares are these two guys here. And then, you know, we got this middle piece here. So we want that edge to match up. And that's that's right here. So these, these points on either side. Uh, so let's start there. So I'm going to just do this where I match up. Um, I match up a color to the same color here. Uh, I don't think I have to worry about rotation or anything really. So... What I'm going to do, since this side has the point that we really need to pay attention to, I'm going to put that guy on top for a moment. And I'm going to take a straight pin, and I'm going to stick the pin right through that point that we want to meet up. And there, it should come out right at the point here. So then I want to 
match that up. I'm basically matching it up with this point right here. So I'm going to just kind of guess at that. So, so I have this on my pin and it's just kind of hanging out in the back. Then I'm going to guess, you know, about a quarter inch down right through that seam, going straight through. And it looks like I could go a hair down lower. So let's, let's do that. Let me get this guy out of my way. We'll just nudge this down a little bit more. You want to match up those points in the back. And I'm going to drop my pin, I think. <laughs> All right. Let's see what we did. Okay, there we go. That's that's right on that point. So once those points are on the pin, then we can line up our edge. There we go. And what we're going for is we want our pin to be straight. We don't want it angled like that or like that. And same same with up and down. We don't want it angled like that. We want it perfectly straight both ways. So that way, uh, and, and you know, line up our edge still. But then we know that our points on either side are going to line up. So once I got it all lined up, my pin is straight. I'm going to take some wonder clips. You can actually take some pins or, you know, you can actually just hold it there too. But I'm going to clamp it. You know what, this is such a small piece, I think I only need one wonder clip here. These are pretty strong fellers. I'm going to put it right, you know, I'm just going to put it right there. And it's a little bit out of the ways of my corner, so I, my little X, so I can, uh, you know, get the machine in there. But then uh, I think that's enough. So then I can pull that out. So this piece is ready to go. Uh, let's sew it. We'll go through this once, and then maybe we'll assembly line and get all these guys ready. But I'll show you what, what it's like to start out with. So to the machine. Oh, you didn't do this block, but you did a bonus block instead. Yeah, this one's pretty intense. There's... You know, as far as paper piecing, it is a relatively easy paper piece because it's just squares and triangles, but there's so many pieces and you got to do four of these. I mean, if this was just the block, that would be pretty cool. But yeah, there's, there's four of them, so it does take a bit of time. All right, so I'm going to sew down here on the line and I'm going to really make sure that I go through that X right there. I'm just gonna get her started. I am gonna back tack still, just for extra security, holding that edge together. All right, and then already I gotta move my wonder clip out of the way. I'm gonna get my stiletto and just kind of hold that corner point. All right, I'm getting to that point. All right, I'm over it, and then to the end. And I'm just gonna back tack it again, and we'll we'll put another we'll put a leader in there, just so we don't have enough a lot of spring hanging around. All right, so let's check that out, and then after this one, I'll kind of like chain piece them. I'll I'll get a bunch of them ready, and then I'll sew them all. But I just kind of want to show you the process first. So let's take a peek. Let's take a peek at it. Okay, I had a little heart attack just then. I thought, oh, what if I didn't? What if I forgot to match up the right colors, but, but we're good. <laughs> so see there, when we open it, that is that X that we sewed through that. So that, that uh, went on that point really, really well there. So we can press this. Oh, I was a little crooked at the end there. Uh, so we'll press this open, but before we press, we're going to want to tear out the seam allowances uh, on either side. So it lay, lies flat when, uh, when I press. So we'll just go on either side. I don't want to tear out anything else, just, just these seam allowances. I think the paper got a little crooked, but I think my actual fabric pieces kind of shimmied in the right spot. Oh, you haven't done machine sewing in two weeks? That's how I was the, the other, like the last couple of weeks, Joe, because we've been doing a, a lot of um, handwork here, so I haven't done anything. So there, now, it, now it's lying a lot flatter. So I'm just gonna give this a press. Look at my funny different color blues because I ran out of that one color blue. So let's let's just shimmy up to the iron quick and bring this guy over. We'll just give him a little press. I'm pressing it kind of away from the, the centerpiece just because that's where it feels like it wants to go. And that's fine with me. Let's see if this guy's big enough. Okay, 
Okie doke. There we are. I love these little wonder clips. Look at them all in color. Okay, so there we go. That is our first assembled piece, and our point looks awesome there. So that's that's the process to get your points to line up, and that's that's pretty important. You you want all these guys to line up. You can't just place them uh, and hope that they're gonna line up, because then your 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 picture will stop, you know, being assembled correctly. Things will be out of place in weird spots. So, oh yes, so guys, next week, we're, we're a week and counting right now, officially a week away, we're going to start the bunny hand embroidery project, the bunny live stitch along, so this guy will be in a week, um, keep you guys, your eyes out for an email, I know I've said this already, but I haven't, I'm not done with it yet, but I'm going to send you an email out, I think we're going to do a little uh, how to for, um, I gotta make sure I get this on the right side, uh, a little how to for transferring a design. I'm gonna do a little how to beforehand, a little video before we start on Monday. Ooh, that was just in the right spot. Just in case you guys didn't wanna use the iron on transfer or you, you wanted to be prepped um, to stitch. Oh yeah, that's awesome, Gina. Yeah, so I will also show, if you guys are getting the PDF, I'll show different ways that you could transfer if you have a PDF design. Um, so I'll just go through a whole pile of ways that you can transfer designs with any embroidery that you get. Um, and then I'll go through like the why, like why do this way instead of, you know, why, why use the iron on instead of, you know, tracing or why trace instead of using uh, the sticky fabric solving it. Like, I'll, I'll kind of go through all that reasoning. So I'm going to just, I'm going to just put a bunch of these together right now. Um, I'll go through a little bit of that before we do the actual stitch along. So the stitch along starts on April 3rd, which is Monday next week. And I think this, um, this little how to for, for the, um, transferring. I think we will probably end up doing that on Thursday. Uh, Wednesday or Thursday, but but I'm kind of banking on, on Thursday right now based on how my week's going. Uh, so that'll be Thursday at 7 p.m. Central Time. And that'll go up on YouTube too. So, uh, But it's always, that's always kind of the hardest part to getting started with embroidery. Like how do I get my design um, transferred? What's that process like? And which way should I do it and, and all that. What's the easiest way? What's the fastest way? What's the best way for the fabric I'm using? Um, all that. So we'll go over that on Thursday in a video. Uh, the bunnies will be at uh, 7 p.m. Central Time as well. So during the bunny stitch along at 7 p.m. we'll do the bunny stitch along and then I'll still do these in the evening after afterwards at uh, 9 uh, 9.30 p.m. So I'm not abandoning you guys for the week. I'll still, I'll still be doing these as well. And I don't want a week off of, of um, getting these splendid sampler blocks done. I need, I need to be diligent. <laughs> Otherwise, it's never going to get finished. So I'll, it'll be two times, uh, two, two times for every day next week. It'll be, um, like I said, seven will be the bunny. This is a uh, central standard time. Uh, the uh, bunnies will be at 7 p.m. and then my normal uh, just, you know, splendid sampler stuff here will be at 9.30 p.m. still. So the bunnies will go for about an hour every night and I think it'll probably take the whole week. All right, we're ready. Let's do, let's do these three and then we'll, we'll press them and take the seam allowance off and then we, then we got these other two here and that's it. That, that actually went pretty quick. So maybe we'll get some other things done. Uh, I think it will go pretty quick, yeah. But yeah, I want to make sure that I get a little video on uh, doing how to transfer your embroidered design before we, before we get started on um, before we get started on Monday. I don't want don't want to leave you guys hanging on that at all. How many more blocks? I have this block and one more, Joe. Then I will be done. Although I do want to make more of those, 
like handmade fabric ones. Oh, they are called Wonder Clips, Rosalie. Um, you can get them probably uh, at any quilt shop. Uh, you can just look online. These are the mini Wonder Clips. They're by Clover. They also come in a couple other sizes, but these mini ones are really nice because uh, they, they taper on the end and they're just a little bit smaller and they're super duper strong. I'm kind of using them exclusively instead of pins lately, it seems. All right, here's my second one. To me, you get the bows done. Are you working on Dedication Rose next week? Um, nope, it'll be, the only thing I have left is Dedication Rose after this, so it, that's what I'll be working on, uh, once I get this done, Lauren. So the 7 o'clock, like I said, the 7 o'clock will be the bunnies, exclusively the bunny stitch along. Then at 9.30, I won't, 9.30, it's not going to be the stitch along, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be this. So, assuming I get this done, all I have left is Dedication Rose, so that's what I'll be doing. That dedication to Rose, though, is going to take me quite a bit of time. Because I'm, I'm needle-turning all that. Oh, yeah. Uh, Rosalie, they've, I, I've never used them before the Splendid Sampler Quilt Along here. The Wonder Clips. And I love them. They're awesome. Oh, hey, Sue! How are you doing? Oh, I've been forever since, uh, since you're up this late. Ah, uh, well, for the, for the bunny thing, it'll be a little earlier, so that won't be so bad. I know, it, it's... It's late. It's getting late for me too. <laughs> but it is, then I can have like a little earlier one every once in a while. All right, we got these three guys ready. Okay, so let's, we'll press these guys. Let's, let's peek, let's peek at our little corners. Ah, that one's okay. Not as good as the first one, but still pretty decent. These two, I need to do both sides yet. Oh, that one looks really good. That point there is what we lined up. Oh, Florida time. Oh yeah, so you're ahead of me. Oh yeah, gosh, so it's probably, it's like 10, 10, 30, or it's probably like 11 almost by you now. And this one looks like it matched up pretty well too. Okay, let's tear these seam allowances out, the papers, and we will press them quick, and then I will sew these last guys on. The other weird thing about how late this is is when a, like daylight savings or when all that I don't know like I don't quite understand it I don't know if daylight savings started or ended but whatever the the hour got you know turned around uh, we sprung forward uh, not every everyone does that so we got a little goofy on our timing there for a few days but I think everyone's got it figured out. Alrighty. I'm excited about this block. Man, it really, it was really fun to start uh, paper piecing again. We hadn't done this in a long time. I hadn't had the machine out in a long time, really, either. We were doing, we had all those embroideries and all those, uh, like we did the fleur de lay one. That was a whole uh, needle turn applique. So a lot of non-machine work. Lately, which makes sense because those are the things that take a long time. So it makes sense that those are my my blocks that I didn't have done. All right, let's press these guys, and then we'll get the other sides on on here. This guy will be done though. That'll be cool. Went a little faster than I thought, so that's nice. I'm not sure if we'll start. The next pieces but maybe I'll cut all the pieces cut all the paper pieces out because then we'll be at least prepped for tomorrow it's kind of nice to do that in one batch maybe otherwise I'll get confused too much fabric everywhere if you cut out all your fabric at once I think you know it's easy to get confused pretty quick with paper piecing so I kind of like to go in sections all right, that looks pretty good. Let's take a look. All right, so that's the start of our little bow. So again, this is a... Uh... Oh, so this one's going in the other direction. I think we're gonna be okay still. I hope I don't 
put it, screwed it up. Huh. Okay, I really hope I didn't screw that up. I don't, I don't, ultimately, it won't be screwed up because it has to go over here. I just did it kind of like in the order that they were going to aim. Yeah, because this one goes this way, this one goes this way. And uh, in theory, we should have been making them all the same way. So I probably sewed the B's. I probably didn't sew the B's and the, the C's on the same side. Yeah, this one I put the B on. So, <laughs> oh well, it's still going to end up being being the same. So I'm not too worried. It's pretty symmetrical. So, all right, let's get these other two on. Yeah, I kind of did it uh, how the angle is going to be. Yet. So, all right, that guy goes there. This guy goes here. Let's get the pin. Oh, you completed 93 after watching. Oh, yay! It's quite good. Which one was 93? I can't remember that one. Little Miracles. I might have to peek for that one later. Yeah, so the dress one, that one is definitely, um, with the dress, you'll be doing a lot of that, you know, we're not doing that much of that here, but we'll be doing a lot of, for that one, you'll be doing a lot of where you make sure that you have the fabric on the, the right side down and really cutting your pieces, your blobs, you're gonna have to pay attention to the, your blob shapes a lot more. Uh, I do cover that in some of the other paper piecing projects, how to cut your blobs so they end up the right size and in the right place and flip the right direction because, you know, you got to mirror everything. So it's kind of a little, a little process. But if you've, if you've seen me on some of these other paper piecing doing that, then it should be pretty easy. Once you get the process down, then it's fine. With this, this block, we don't have to really deal with that because we're just doing rectangles and triangles and those are pretty easy to visualize. All right, this is our last one. Go through that point. And I'm always just double checking that it's through the point there. Oh, it's the tell that Sulky is replacing the bad product. He called the day and they're sending you product. Oh, good. So um, that's great, Holly. So if you guys find that you're having trouble with your sticky fabric Sulky, it sounds like, I've heard that from someone else too, Holly, so it sounds like if you complain to Sulky, they'll send you a whole new package, which is great, because you remember how we talked about uh, on that heart block that we did, that we stitched, how it came out so slimy? Uh, that's incorrect. I think they had a bad batch. They were either like trying something new or, or something, and they went back to the old formula, uh, which is the good kind, where it flex off and the little paper flakies, then you can actually see where, you know, where, where it's coming off and it doesn't leave like the slimy residue to wreck your iron and stuff. So, and it makes the process just so much nicer. So if you do have that slimy kind, you know, contact Sulky and they'll send you a new one. Kind of a huge bummer, but I think they've had a lot of complaints, I'm thinking, so they know that a stitchers like it the other way, which is nice. That means they're listening, at least. I su suspect that the slimy kind is good if you are putting something into the wash right after, like if that's how you're getting it off, but that's not typical for embroiderers, I don't think. She said to take Dawn to soap and apply it to the dry block. Oh, interesting. It has the residue left on it and let it sit there for a couple hours and then rinse off. Ah, okay, Holly, I will have to try that for sure because I, I think I have a couple blocks that were like that where the sticky Fabrisoli was like slimy instead. And yeah, okay, so just let Dawn stun it for a while and then wash it out. I may have to try that, if anything, just to do a test to make sure. Thanks for letting me know, Holly. That's, that's awesome. So. Okay, put some Dawn on there. So it sounds like, sounds like they have a plan at least. So it doesn't completely ruin your project. So another thing I've heard lately, uh, you guys, just about the Faber-Selvi. I have not experienced this, but uh, someone mentioned this and someone actually sent me a photo too of, the photo wasn't of Sticky Faber-Selvi, it was of a different brand. It was the Pellons. 
stick and wash away, but it left a halo on the fabric. So, and I think it might be the a fabric or like an issue with the fabric. Really, um, like if it has a lot of dyeing or something, I I don't know. But like if you if you're planning on doing like a big fancy embroidery or whatever, any embroidery really, and you um, haven't used Fabricel Baby before or a particular fabric, I would do a little spot test, like cut off a little piece of the Fabricel Baby and put it on the fabric, and then I don't know, then try and wash it away uh, in the normal the normal way uh, that you, just running it underwater and stuff and see if it stains on the outside of the fabric. I am, I, like I said, I haven't experienced that, but I had, um, I had someone mention that to me. So now I'm, I'm kind of curious about that. I'm wondering if that can be solved with just some soap or something too, but I don't know that the halo thing seems like a bigger issue than the fabric solely coming off. So just another thing to maybe check before jumping in, oh, you guys, I, I pressed it the wrong way. That means I just put toner all over uh, my iron. Let's see if I can rub it off. I'm, we'll see. Hopefully I don't get toner on all the white parts here. Oh, well. You always want to, you never want to press with the printed side up because that printer toner gets on your iron. Just missed it. Okay, there we are. Ooh, good luck, uh, Holly. That's exciting. All right, so I guess I've kind of determined where these are going since I've angled them <laughs> certain ways already. So like that. In theory, we were supposed to make them all going this direction and then just rotate it like that, but I kind of, I just sewed them on like I flipped these two around on accident, so I'm, I'm doing it this way, which should have the same effect. But, you know. All right, I just, got, I just have to keep that in mind. So we got these guys. So that's it. That's the process of putting, a, uh, getting points to match up. So this is with any paper piecing. Anytime you're sewing two sections together, like the C section to the A section, anytime you're sewing the sections together, you want to make sure you're matching up those points that need to need to happen with that pin method. So again, just putting the pin straight through and then just clipping it before before sewing. That's a general process. So at this point, you could do all the rest of it because um, that's you know that's the idea. You get the sense of how to actually put the piece together. Um, so I think tonight yet, why don't I trim out? I think I'm going to trim out my D and E sections and prep those. Uh, because those will get started on right away tomorrow. So I think all that's all we'll do yet tonight, get prepped for that. So we're going to treat these the same way we treated these, where we kind of do all of them at once. And I think that will that will speed us through this process too. I'm hoping we can do all of them, all six little shapes all at once. So, you know, it is just rectangles again, so we should be able to cut a whole pile of them at once. We don't have to guess on what size blobs or anything, because squares and rectangles are really easy. You just make it, you know, cut a rectangle, just, you know, almost you know, with a generous seam allowance, like a half inch, or, you know, a little less than half inch seam allowance. More than a quarter inch. Okay. That's one segment for tomorrow. Let's get our other two going. So Holly, I want to go when I um go over the different ways to transfer an embroidery design. When I do that video later this week, I'll uh, go over the fabric solving too, and I'll, I'll be sure to mention that you can contact Sulky if it's not working too, because that's, that's good, because there was that batch, and who knows, um, who knows how much of that's out there, you know, that slimy batch of it. Good to know that it comes off, uh, you know, I have that, I have that heart block, you know, I mentioned earlier that came off with that slimy stuff, maybe I'll, um, oh man, I'm actually, now that I think of it, I don't know if I have any Dawn on me, 
Uh, I might, but uh, I'll try maybe tonight putting some Dawn on it, and then we can see what it looks like tomorrow. I'll pull it out tonight yet, so, so we can look at it. But I want to give that a try, so letting the Dawn sit on it. I'll just let it sit overnight, because it's late. <laughs> Should we be doing a design transfer with you later this week or addressing it? So, um, Lauren, I will be doing the actual transfer uh, on the Monday, April 3rd. However, if you want to have it done beforehand, that's perfectly fine. Um, I will be doing it on Monday. Uh, but before you do it, wait for the video where uh, the, later this week on Thursday. I'm gonna do a little beforehand video on how to transfer, different ways to transfer design. So you can choose, you know, what might be best for the fabric you're using or whatever. But if you're using the kit, you know, you just use the iron-on. But I'll show you how to do that as well. Cause you might wanna come pre prepared and just ready to stitch, or you might wanna, you know, iron it with me. Cause I'll be ironing mine um, the day of. But I'll show you how to do it beforehand. So at least wait till that video, and then you can decide if you want to do it yourself, um, or or wait till the day of. All right, here are my D pieces and my E pieces. So this is that, that, this is what we'll work on tomorrow. So this is what will go at the top and bottom of these. This basically creates the rest, this entire inside. And then we just have the two strips to put on yet. So the same thing here. So that's the deal. You know what? I think I'm going to color in the shapes really quick while we're here too. So again, the filled in, it's already kind of marked. So that's how I know where to put it. Uh, but just for an extra visual aid, the colored in part is the bow and everything else is background. It's a little lighter on these E's. So I want to make sure I can see them. All these E2 pieces are the bow. And that's that. So we will get ready to sew those tomorrow. I have all my scraps here and all my random extra blues since I'm out of I'm out of that original blue color. I'm gonna end up using all these other funny blues. But I want to quick just uh, check for that block, and we'll try doing that dawn. I'll put that dawn on it overnight. Um, let's see. Oh gosh, you know what? I don't even know what number it was. We're gonna page through. Do you guys remember what number it was? I know it was in above 50. This is my above 50, um, above 50 binder. Where are you? Oh man, it must be way early, holy cow. Oh, there it is, geez, 60. Okay, let me pull this out. I just wanna look at this one quick. This guy, I could take the lines up. There's dedication rows here. So this is the this is the last one I don't have done. We got a whole pile of stuff to go on there though. Alright. Let's go back up. Oh. Alright, so here is so if we look really close, oh yeah, so right in here you can see some of that Fabrisolvi. Oh yeah, here's a good good spot. Some of that Fabrisolvi that didn't come out um, just around the flowers and stuff a little bit in the leaves there. So I will try that method. I'll just put some Dawn on there and let it, and some gun on the side here. Um, I'll let it soak overnight. Man, this is a cute black, I like it. <laughs> um, and we'll see if that helps take it off. We'll do a little test. So, all right guys, I think that's where we'll end it tonight. I know it was pretty quick, but you know, we were able to go through that one idea there and then we'll be ready to go tomorrow for these other blocks. So, all right, I'm going to flip you around and we will call it an evening. There we go. Oh, thanks. I'm so excited, Grace. I want to put them together. Like I'm going just batty a little bit. It's that, it's the spring that is not coming and the uh, not being done with the splendid sampler blocks yet. I'm just going a little cuckoo. <laughs> But yeah, so there's, there's that guy. I'll, I'll test that one. And then we got all these little pieces. The A, what do we have? A through A, B, and C segments are connected. 
Um, I'm hoping to, yes, go to my mom's to still assemble them all and to lay them all out because then we can put them all on her, her floor there. She told me, though, that she has her, uh, she's doing that sashing where it looks like the little drop shadow, the little shadow behind it. She uh, said that she finished all her sashing for that, so I think she's just got to decide where she wants them laid out. So I'm hoping, um, hoping to head down there sometime and we'll... I gotta finish my blacksmith first, but once my blocks are done, uh, I'm gonna hopefully go there, go there and lay it all out. Yes, I hope it works too, Holly. I will, I will check back with you guys to see if that dawn worked. I'll, I'll put that on right now. So, all right, guys, thanks again. I will get this up on the YouTube. I know I'm falling behind on the YouTubes again, but I think I will start it up tonight again, uh, and I'll hopefully get all the backlog YouTubes up uh, coming coming up soon too. So thanks again, and I will catch you guys tomorrow evening. Good night.